Have you ever dreamed of speaking four or five of the major Romance languages? Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and French? Let me tell you, it's absolutely possible. Because if you start learning one, or know one or two already, it unlocks the secrets to the others. It's not just about the similar words, but also how we put them together. One of the biggest challenges that you have to overcome to master these four is the subjunctive grammar. The fifth major Romance language, Romanian, is not included in this discussion because Romanian relies on the indicative mood in situations where the other Romance languages would use the subjunctive. So, what is the subjunctive? The subjunctive is a verb form that is used to talk about wishes, possibilities, uncertainties, or hypothetical situations. It is not about what is happening. That is the indicative, which is used for stating facts and things that are definitely true or happening. So, while the indicative says, this is, the subjunctive says, this might be, or I wish this were, for example, in English, we use the subjunctive in phrases like, I suggest that he study more, to express something we think should happen, not something that is actually happening. In recent years, the use of the subjunctive in English has become less strict. Many native speakers might say, if I was you, instead of the traditional subjunctive, if I were you, because the difference is not always clear in English verbs. However, in Romance languages, the subjunctive is still very important. It changes the form of the verb and is used correctly by most native speakers. The subjunctive mood functions similarly across Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and French as these are all Romance languages. However, there are differences in usage, conjugation, and specific context amongst these languages. Here is a brief comparison. The subjunctive is widely used in Spanish. It appears in subordinate clauses following expressions of doubt, emotion, desire, or uncertainty. The conjugation roles for the subjunctive in Spanish can be complex, especially in the present tense. Portuguese subjunctive usage is similar to Spanish, but there are some differences in conjugation. Portuguese also has distinct forms for the future subjunctive, which is not common in the other Romance languages. Italian, like Spanish and Portuguese, employs a subjunctive mood to express a range of non-real scenarios, including doubt, possibility, wish, and hypothetical situations. The conjugation of Italian, however, has its unique rules that differ from Spanish and Portuguese. The French subjunctive is used less frequently than in the other three languages. The conjugation patterns in French are distinct from the other Romance languages, and in some cases, simpler. Let's look at some examples in these four languages in which the subjunctive is required. For contrast, I will put the indicative mood conjugation in parentheses. It's for expressing doubt. For example, I don't think he will come. Dudo que él venga. Duvido que él venga. Dubito que lui venga. Je doute qu'il vienne. It conveys emotion. It's sad that they are sick. Es triste que estén enfermos. Es triste que ellos estén doentes. Es triste que sean malate. Se triste que se sean malade. It shares desires. I want you to succeed. Quiero que tengas éxito. Eu quiero que você tenha sucesso. Vou que tu abia sucesso. Je veux que tu réussis. It's for the uncertain. Maybe it'll rain tomorrow. Quizás llueva mañana. Talvez chova amanhã. Forse domani piova. Peut-être que pleve demain. However, it's worth noting that in modern spoken French, the indicative is often used in such expressions of uncertainty. So you might also hear, peut-être que pleve demain. And it is perfect for hypotheticals. If I were rich, I would travel more. 
Se fuera rico, viajaría más. Se eu fosse rico, viajaría más. Se fosse rico, viajarei de più. Se j'étais riche, je voyagerai plus. The unique Portuguese future subjunctive is used for actions that may happen in the future under certain conditions. When I have money, I will buy a car. In Spanish, it would be the present subjunctive. Cuando yo tenga dinero, me compare un coche. But in Portuguese, cuando eu tiver dinero, vou comprar un carro. I know for those who have never studied or spoken one of these languages, especially for those with a background in Asian languages such as Thai, Vietnamese, Chinese, and other languages in which you don't have to conjugate verbs, it is extremely difficult at first to understand how it all works and to be able to use it naturally. But to me, that is also one of the most beautiful aspects of Romance languages. It is the bridge between reality and possibility, between what is and what could be. And I believe that on the journey of mastering how to use the subjunctive in those languages, you will definitely have a better understanding of the mindset of the people speaking the languages and their worldviews. If you can understand and learn how to use the subjunctive in one of these languages, learning its use in the others is a piece of cake. You can do it so quickly. And if you are interested in Asian languages, I also have one video explaining the synergy in learning Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and Vietnamese that will help you create a better strategy to learn these fascinating languages and make your polyglot dreams come true. See you in the next video.